thing for you to do Your hand is moving right now You are still showing up At the tomb of every Lazarus Your voice is calling me Those who, when they have heard, go out 
and are choked with care, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his words. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, and most gracious God, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the God that spoke to the prophet Ezekiel in a valley full of dried bones, and said unto those dry bones, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Father God, thou art Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the only one true and living God, and besides thee there be no other God. Mm -hmm. O oh, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne to say thank you mm -hmm. for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for looking far beyond our faults and taking care of our every need. Mm -hmm. Most of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, whom you gave to die upon the cross that all mankind might have a right to the tree of life. Father, we pray your blessing upon our pastor and upon the borders. Mm -hmm. Continue to crown his head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mm -hmm. Build him up where he's torn down, prop him up on all leaning sides. Mm -hmm. We pray for his family. Mm -hmm. Strengthen them that they may continue to be a blessing unto him to minister unto his needs. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father, we pray for all of the sick in the earth, but especially the sick of Mount Zion Baptist Church at 1012 Adam Street. Mm -hmm. Let your Holy Spirit roll over this church. Let it touch each and every one of those in nursing homes, hospitals, those that are shut in at home. Have them to know they may be shut in, but they're not shut out from your healing grace. Oh, Father, we pray for that lost son of man, son of woman, son of boy, son of girl, who have not yet accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior. Cause them, Father, to come to themselves, fall upon their knees and cry out, Lord God, hear am I. What must I do to be saved? We thank you for our salvation through Jesus Christ. But Father, we know that that salvation did not come free. It came with the price, that price being the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, Father, we pray that you continue to open our eyes, continue us to allow to see that you are God all by yourself. Let us know, Father God, that even though it may be cloudy, even though it may be dark and dreary, there is still, at the end of the tunnel, a light that shines through Christ Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father God, that you have brought us thus far. And we know you have not brought us this far to leave us. So continue, Father God, to increase our faith. Yes. Teach us, Father God, to help one another. Teach us, Father God, to love one another. Teach us, Father God, to realize that nothing we can do can get us any salvation. It only comes through Jesus Christ. It yes. cannot be bought. It cannot be earned. It cannot be paid for. It has to be accepted. That acceptance of Jesus Christ. So we just thank you, Father God, for all you have done. We thank you for what you're doing now. We thank you for what you're going to do. Yes. We thank you for our salvation. Yes. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to be your children. Yes. Oh, we know there are children of darkness and children of light. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us out of darkness into that marvelous light, yes. that light being Jesus Christ who is the light of this world. We thank you. We praise your holy name. We ask these blessings and all others. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, as we both say, Amen. As we all say, Amen. Mm -hmm.
question is. Question is. When you're standing at a crossroad, what do you do? What do you do? Real sweet, when a fork is in the road. When a fork is in the road, what do you do? When the world is on your shoulders. When the world is on your shoulders, what do you do? When your back is up against the wall. When your back is up against the wall. Come on. What do you do? What do you do? You hold on and keep the faith. Tell somebody on your road, say, come on, tell somebody sitting around you, keep the faith. Come on, encourage somebody else, keep the faith. Where do you look? When there's nowhere else to look. Where do you turn? When there's nowhere else to turn. Where do you go? When there's nowhere else to go. What do you do? When there's nothing else to do. You got to remember, you're in the master's hand. And the master has a plan. So hold on. Hold on. And keep the faith. Keep the faith. We declare to you from the word of God that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall, that I shall, rejoice and be glad in it. We come still declaring that God is a mighty, mighty good God. And we are thankful for all that he has done for us. Good morning to my beloved Mount Zion family friends and all God's people who are assembled in this virtual worship service of celebrating 133 years as an established church of God. As I look back over the past 19 years, I can truly say, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the one who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore, empower, strengthen, and establish you, which is prevailing faith, the journey to restoration. In other words, nothing harmful can come to, uh, to Mount Zion. Mount Zion shall grow in strength, in number and in the divine power of God. With heartfelt joy do I celebrate
his 133rd year for the Mount Zion Baptist Church, which was established in the year 1888 by the will of God. God who preserved our lives to witness this day shall keep us alive to witness many more. I am grateful to God for those members who have died in the Lord and are resting from their labor. For every good and amazing thing that was orchestrated to Mount Zion Baptist Church in this new season. As our church entered a new season, may the new and marvel things begin to show forth through the lives of the members in the life of the Church of God in all spiritual and physical ramification. I celebrate this day in thanksgiving and appreciation to God for Sister Andrea Coleman, chairman of our 133rd year church anniversary program celebration, Minister Carolyn Harrison, Minister Mary DeVos, Minister Linda Hill, Associate Ministers, Deacon John Dukes, Chairman and the Deacon Board, Deaconess Patricia Rouser, President and the Deaconess Ministry, Sister Shirley Ware, Chairman and the Trustee Board, the Ministries of Mount Zion Baptist Church, Sister Marietta White, Administrative Assistant, Sister Kayla Barron, Office Helper, Sister Monique Grayson, Videographer, Sister Don Raspberry, Producer, who has allowed the wondrous work of God to be shown in this celebration. May Mount Zion continue to give glory to God and that that glory will always be seen in manifestations of Jesus Christ, never ceasing in our midst. I pray God's blessings and continue up to uplift our leaders in wisdom, knowledge, grace, and anointing. In the excitement of the day, I give God praise for every member of Mount Zion Baptist Church. But well, allow me to acknowledge those who have achieved 25 plus years of membership, those who have achieved 50 plus years of membership, those old and gray-headed, as stated in Psalm 71, 18, who by reason of strength, they are 80 plus and 90 plus years of age. To God be the glory. I am thankful to God for his messenger, Pastor George S. Henderson Sr., pastor of the Little Rock Baptist Church of Foley, Alabama, and a member of Mount Zion Baptist Church. As we hear God's spoken word through Pastor Henderson, may the outpouring of the Holy Spirit fill us and help us to be like the truth planted by living waters. May the old see dreams and the young see vision, and may we soar with wings as eagles. As beneficiary of the redeeming grace of Jesus Christ, let us be encouraged to keep pressing in the light of God. May the blood of Jesus always speak for us and may our lives be encapsulated in him. May we be victorious at all times over challenges life throws at us and may Mount Zion Baptist Church will stand and conquer every power contrary to that of Jesus Christ. Happy church anniversary. God's blessings and favor.
Good morning. Truly, we greet you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To our pastor, Pastor Portis, and to the Mount Zion family, to my wife, and to all those that who are listening on Facebook or calling in, however you are watching this service this morning, we truly want to thank God as we come this morning to celebrate 133 years that Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church have been established. Truly, we thank God for all the great leadership, and we thank God for all the great members, those who have come this way and those that are still here. But today is a good day. It's a day that we can be able to give God some praise and, and give God some glory. Let us have a word of prayer this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. We come, Lord, to just to say thank you. Lord God, you have brought us a mighty long way. Yes, I have the Father, we thank you so much for those that who came together some years ago to establish and put their church in place. We thank you, Lord God, for moving our hearts. And we thank you for the love that has been passed down from one generation to another. Mm -hmm. We truly thank you for all the great leaders that you have placed here and all the great members. Lord God, we are still standing, and we come this morning just to say thank you. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the leadership that you have put in place here today. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless this family. Continue, Lord, to keep them together as one. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you this morning, and uh, we are grateful and thankful to the Mount Zion family, God support us to allow us to come and speak with you this morning on the 133 year church anniversary. We are grateful and thankful. And this morning we just want to look into that theme. And that theme this morning, did you have a Bible, you can turn with us to 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, verse 10. And 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, verse 10. In the New Living Translation, it reads, In His kindness, God called you to share His eternal glory by the means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, He will restore, support, and strengthen you. He will place you on a firm foundation, all power to Him. Forever. Amen. One I want to talk about overcome through prevailing faith. Mm -hmm. Overcome through prevailing faith. And one of the things that I want to be mindful of, as we look at what to prevail means, it means to prove more powerful than a whole force. Mm -hmm. To be victorious, to conquer, to overcome. So as we look into this text today, we find that faith is the evidence mm -hmm. how the church has overcome from the first century until this present time. Yes, sir. In 1 John 5 and 4 and 5, it says that for whatever is born of God overcome the world. Mm -hmm. And this is the victory that overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcome the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, sir. And we'll find that during the first century, there were many followers of Christ. They had to suffer, they were abused, they were persecuted for just believing and obeying Jesus Christ. And the church was known as the people of the way. And our writer of this letter today, Peter, knew persecution firsthand. I'm very mindful of Peter. 
And many of y'all know that he was one of Jesus' faithful disciples. He was one that was part of the inner circle. He was one that not only did he mind cursing, but he didn't mind cutting. He was just that type of man, but we also know that he was with Jesus when he went up on Mount Transfiguration. Yes, and it was him who said, Lord, it's good to be here. Yeah. We shall build three tabernacles. So we find here now Peter, one of the ones that we oftentimes look at the fact that he denied Jesus three times when Jesus was on his way to Calvary. But we also have to remember the fact that Peter, even though he had denied Jesus, but after Jesus resurrected, Peter and the other disciples was out fishing. And Jesus was on the banks. And they realized that it looked like Christ to them. Peter was naked. He jumped into the water. But look what Jesus did. Jesus took some coal and baked some bread and some fish. And when they came back to shore, he restored the right hand fellowship with Peter. Yeah, right. he, he, he asked Peter, he said, Peter, thou son of Jonah, do thou love me more than thee? Mm -hmm. Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Peter, thou son of Jonah, do you love me more than thee? Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Peter, do you love me more than thee? Lord, you know I love you. Mm -hmm. He said, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. And it was Peter, the one that stood up on the day of Pentecost yes, and confronted the Jews how wrong it was for them to kill our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it was Peter that addressed them. He addressed them so powerful. And what we find that after that great sermon, that the church began to increase mm -hmm. in great numbers. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that began to be a great persecution against the church. How many of y'all know this morning that when Jesus said to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not be there. It didn't matter how much suffering that the church had to experience. There was nothing was going to be able to stop the growth of the church. Yes, no stone, no suffering, no threatening, no abuse. It didn't matter what came against the church. Because mm -hmm. Jesus had already set the foundation yes, that there would be nobody to mm -hmm. be able to stop the growth of the church. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of Peter. Peter and John were on their way to the temple at the ninth hour. That was a lame man. He was there a baby. And Jesus and Peter said, look on us. Look on us. Silver and gold we have now. But in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we notice that the same Hebrew council, the Jews and others, brought Peter and John before them. Want to know about how this man was healed. But one of the things that I'm so grateful and thankful about Peter, I don't try to remember how he denied Jesus. Right. That's not the facts no more. No, sir. But one of the things that I'm so proud of, when they told them not to preach no more mm -hmm. in his name, but they told him that there's no other name that we can preach. It didn't matter if you hung us. It didn't matter if you killed us. We're going to continue to preach in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. So we are thankful. Mm -hmm. 
Peter and John stood strong and bold. And how many of y'all know that the church prevailed not only through faith, but through prayer also. So we're applying here in our text today. Before his death, he wrote this letter to the believer that was scattered and suffered for their faith. Giving them comfort, giving them hope, giving them encouragement to them to prevail and to continue to keep the faith. Mm -hmm. So Peter began this letter in chapter 1. And he began thanking God for salvation. Mm -hmm. He explained to his church, the reader, that trial will refine their faith. In first Peter, the first chapter, verses 7 through 9. He said that the trial of your faith being more precious than gold, than power. Though so it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ. Who having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, and yet believe. Ye rejoice with the joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receive the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Yes, so what we are saying today to all of us, and today Peter give us hope. He give the church hope. And, 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 and we just have to understand that we must learn how to believe. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, you know what grace is? The church will not survive without grace. Church will not survive without mercy. The church will not provide without forgiveness. I want to remind you today, just as much as Christ has given us grace, then we should be able as church people to give each other grace. Yes, we should be able to give each other more than what they ever deserve. Mm -hmm. And we should never try to put one another down. See, grace is what keeps us, mm -hmm. helps us to learn how to give one another. He said, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ with himself. So hope is the confidence at the trouble and difficult of this life. We can count on God to glorify us in heaven. So I'm going to remind you what he said here just for a little while. I want to let you know that trouble won't last always. Yes, sir. You got to understand that it's just going to just be a little while. Mm -hmm. Even this pandemic it's not going to last always. No, but we got to learn in the midst of this trouble. And we look at many of us who may not be back into the building. You got to remember the building is not the church. Right. The building is a place of worship. Yes, where you come and assemble yourself as brothers and sisters to praise God. We got to understand during this time that even though we are in much trouble, we got to learn how to encourage one another. Mm -hmm. During our suffering, mm -hmm. we are preserved until we are taken to glory. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to worry about it. God has already preserved us. Mm -hmm. There will be a time that all of us will be in that new heaven. And God, you believe a son to perfect, to believe. And what he means by being perfect, it means to join up together, mm -hmm. to restore us. And that's what we have to understand in the midst of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. No matter how long it takes for us to get back to the norm, but we got to be able to stay together as brother and sister. And God will restore us, give us that completeness that we will need. 
May God use us to establish, to burn inside of us, keep us strong, unmovable, no matter what may come. God use us, for we can be able to stand on a solid foundation. God used something to strengthen us. Even though our flesh get weak. But thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. He lived in us. That's why Jesus, before he went, he reminded his disciples. He said, I will send you another comfort. Yes, he will be inside of you. Mm -hmm. He will strengthen you when you're weak. Mm -hmm. He will build you up when you're torn down. He will raise your head up when you bow down. I'm just saying that even though you think suffering is bad, but sometimes you got to understand suffering is what we, we find our faith. Yes, Paul said in Ephesians 6 and 1, he said, Pilate, my brother, mm -hmm. he said, be strong in the Lord, yes, sir. in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Where you can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes, God will use suffering to settle us, to secure us, and put us on a solid foundation. Yes, Faith is the evidence. Not only if we trouble on last always, but we got to be mindful. Faith is the evidence. Faith is a substance of thing hope for, and an evidence of thing not seen. Faith is the evidence. When I look back at Jehovah Fast, Jehovah Fast showed us how to prevail. Now the three nations had got together to destroy the southern kingdom. But Jehovah Fast went down in prayer. Not only did he pray, but he also asked the congregation to pray with him. Yeah. They all went in prayer and they prayed. And God gave him the answer. He told the old man, the battle is not yours, well, well. but the battle is mine. Yeah. And told him to get some men saved and put out front. And remind them saying, said, the Lord is good. His mercy endure forever. He said, tell them, praise ye the Lord, that his mercy endure forever. We find through faith it prevail, prayer prevail, and also praising God we can prevail. Because they tell me when they begin to shout. Said, praise ye the Lord, his mercy endure forever. The enemy began to destroy themselves. Yes, faith is the evidence. Mm -hmm. By faith, he was translated well, that he should not see death. Yes, but he had this testimony yeah. that he pleased God. Yeah. By faith, Abraham left his home. Mm -hmm. Didn't even know where he was going to the land that the Lord would show him. By faith, Moses chose to suffer affliction mm -hmm. with his people instead of being called in the day of the house of Pharaoh. Yeah. By faith, the wall of Jericho fell down. So. so I'm telling you today, by faith, we got to understand they went through trial. Mm -hmm. They went through suffering. They were put in prison. Mm -hmm. They were stoned to death. Mm -hmm. They were sawed in hand. They were slain. They were afflicted. They were tormented, they wandered in dust, they wandered in mountains, den and cave. But I gotta remind you today, because they were there because of their faith. Yes, I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what kind of trouble that you have. But you have something that God has given you. Yeah. You have faith. And how do you get faith? Faith comes by him. Yeah. And him he comes by the word of God. Preach you that. cannot get faith. Watching the soap opera. Okay. You can't get faith watching Tyler Perry move. No, you can't get faith watching a football game on Sunday. No, you got to be able to get faith by studying and believing.
in God's word. Yeah. God is a good God. Yes, sir. And I want you to understand that you've got to have faith. Yeah. Faith is what we all got to have. Well, well. I want to remind you today. Sometimes you got to know this here. But better faith is the victory before the battle. Yeah. We'll find that David, even though he faced Goliath, mm -hmm. he had already claimed he was going to win the victory. Mm -hmm. He didn't wait till the battle was over. Mm -hmm. He already knew that his God was going to deliver him. Right. He told Goliath, you come out here with a helmet and a shield and a sword and a spear, mm -hmm. but I come out here in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Faith will tell you, the Hebrew boy will tell you, will bear when they try to put you in the power of well, well, And it said how they stood before the king. Yeah. The king said that, did you hear the music? Did you see the power of furnace? I said that if anybody don't bow, will be cast into the power of furnace. But I can hear the Hebrew boy say to the king, it doesn't matter. He said, well, if you don't bow, I'll turn it up seven times hotter. Mm -hmm. But I can hear the boy say, you can turn it up 12 times. Come on, you can turn it up 18 times. On, you can turn it up 20 times. Yeah. But the God that we serve, we know he will deliver us. And if he don't deliver us, we still won't bow. No. God it's a good God. Yeah. I want to remind you today. Although faith is evident, evident, but we can also remember this here. If we suffer, if we suffer, mm -hmm. but what good, not bad. See, many of us are suffering because we don't want to forgive. Yeah. We are suffering because we hold a building it and judgment against people. Mm -hmm. But if you suffer, Peter said in that third chapter, suffer for something good. Yeah, yeah. And when you suffer for something good, you will be mindful of this, from suffering to glory. Yeah. That's what you want to understand. Well, well. All of us are going to have some difficult days. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're in a pandemic. Yes, many people are passing on. But we got to remind ourselves that during this pandemic, God knew it before the foundation of the world mm -hmm. that we were experiencing this time. He knew that the church was not the building. If the church still blessed people outside and giving them clothes, visiting them when they were sick, this is what he was saying. And I thank God for this church. Even during the pandemic, even though they may not be back in the house to worship, but they're still feeding the home. Mm -hmm. They're still closing the neck. Mm -hmm. They're still taking care of the sick. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to do yeah, yeah. during this time. Matthew 5 and 10 says, Bless our day, mm -hmm. which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, mm -hmm. for that is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And that's another part of your text, of your subject this year. And I'm very, very, very interested in it. It said, a journey to restoration. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. that is a journey that we got to understand with all of us. Is on the journey. Yes, sir. I'm mindful of the Old Testament church that were down in Babylonia for 70, for 70 years. Mm -hmm. I'm mindful that even down there, that God sent a message to Jeremiah mm -hmm. to tell the people to go ahead and live because they were not going to get out of the 70 years. I know Paul Proper tell you that you're going to get out soon. But I have sentenced you to 70 years. And what I'm saying is to all of us today, we don't know how this pandemic is going to last. Right. But go ahead and live. Go ahead and live. 
and go ahead and love one another. Build houses. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your family while you can. But we'll find here that God did not forget about his people. He took the hearts of Sodom. And that was a decree that went out that all the Jews can return back to their homeland. Yeah. Can you see them journeying back to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. going back to their homeland now? Thousands, millions of people heading back home. And the only way back home, they were singing a song of 126. What is it? And they were saying here that they, we, we were that people that had a dream. Mm -hmm. And say, look what at us. And we just could not believe that all these 70 years, we are on our way back to be restored. Yeah. And he's saying that we were people of that dream. And, and but look what the heathen said. The heathen said that the Lord has done a good thing for them. And the Lord will have to do a good thing for us. Yeah. We got to understand, even though we may so in tears, but we shall weep in joy. Yeah. We got to understand that we can lay in joy for the night. But joy. But joy come in the morning. Yeah. And that's why I have this joy. And the joy that I have that the world did not give it to me. Right. And the world did not take it away. Yeah. So why do you have so much joy today? I thank God for his son that came down through 42 generations. Yes, one that was born of a virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. The one that was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Mm -hmm. The one at the 12 years old was in the temple mm -hmm. and told his mother, I must be about my father's business. Mm -hmm. The one that at the age of 30 years old on his way to the Jordan. And on the way, his cousin John saw him coming. And John said, Behold, here comes the Lamb of God yeah. to take away the sin of this world. Yeah. And John baptized him in the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. And God spoke from heaven, yes, saying, This is my beloved son, well. who I am well pleased. And we all know that he opened up blind eyes. Well. He unstopped their fears. Yeah. He raised the dead. Yeah. He healed the sick. He did walk on water, and we already know that we got how good that he was done. Yeah. But the most important thing that he knew that one day he had to face suffering. Yeah. And they tell me that when he was in the garden of the well, well, last well. time with his disciples, Judas had went out and betrayed him. Mm -hmm. And when they came to arrest him, we'll find here that Peter took out his sword. Well. And cut out the centurion ear. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, because he the man of all healing, man of all grace and forgiveness, reached down and picked up the ear and put it back on the centurion well, head. Well, well, and well. told Peter, put up the sword. Mm -hmm. If I need any help, I can talk to my dad. And he'll face. send me 12 leaves of an angel. Yeah. They tell me they march him to judge my hall, to judge my hall. They beat on him. They spit on him. Mm -hmm. And they took him to Calvary. Mm -hmm. And they stretched him wide. They hung him high on Calvary. Mm -hmm. He died on Calvary. Yeah. They buried him in a barber tomb. For yeah. well, early the third day morning that God raised him from the dead. Yes, With all power wow. in his hand. Yeah. After his resurrection, he walked his earth for 40 days. And went out on Mount Island. Yeah. And when he went out on Mount Island, he began to ascend it up into heaven. Mm -hmm. And God dispatched a cloud and took him back to glory. And God sent down angels and spoke to you men of Galilee. Mm -hmm. Why do you stand here gazing? Well, that same Jesus, same Jesus that you saw going up is yeah. coming back in that now. Yes, He's all right this morning. Yes, sir. He's all right. Yes, sir. In order to reign with him, you're going to have to suffer with him. Mm -hmm. God bless you this morning, Mount Zion. Thank God for these 133 years. Yes, sir. Rebelling faith. Keep the faith. Yeah. Continue to believe and trust God. Mm -hmm. Because God is our source mm -hmm. and is our strength. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We want to extend to you now.
the invitation of discipleship. I truly don't know how you are listening this morning, how you tune into the service. But be mindful that we serve a God that is everywhere present. And if you know that you have backstated up, you know that you have done wrong, even in your house or in your car, wherever you are, you can ask God to forgive you. Just send your heart. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, forgive me of my sin. For so wherever you are, and if you're in a home, and you know that you have not given your life to Christ and you're on the phone, that may be a church in your area. You may not want to come here, but go somewhere mm -hmm. and give the ministry of your right hand and give God your heart. Mm -hmm. So God bless you this morning. And may God keep you. Is my prayer.